Hello and welcome to the Arsenal Way, back again with our Team Predictor show, this time previewing Arsenal's clash against Brentford. I'm delighted to be joined by Alfie Lambert for this one. How are you doing this afternoon, Alfie? Yeah, afternoon, morning, whatever it is, Umar. Um, I'm, I'm doing very well, thank you. Hope you're well. Yeah, not too bad, my friend, not too bad. Big clash against Brentford, um, an opportunity for Arsenal to bounce back. After that, the feat against Everton. It's going to be a tricky tie, I think, tomorrow uh, at the Emirates because Brentford this season, I think they've been fantastic. They've developed even further under Thomas Frank. They gain, they've got so many good results. That uh, win against Manchester City away from home, that home victory against Liverpool, mm. uh, that 4-0 win against Manchester United, which seems a, a long time ago. But... We've we've done well against Brentford this season. Um three nil victory, um away from home, a very dominant performance I thought mm. it was. I, I was over in Dubai, I think, that time. And I was yeah, you was, yeah. Phone, and I was watching my phone, I thought, wow. I never expected it, if I'm honest. Mm. I thought this 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 game would be tricky. This game could be like a banana skin tie. Where then I'll be crying in my hotel and I'll be thinking, <laughs> Oh, Arsenal, I've ruined my holiday. But yeah. they didn't. Three nil mm. victory. But uh, what's your thoughts on tomorrow's game? Because like I've said, it's an opportunity to bounce back. Yeah, you know, we were saying on the agenda, it's, it's going to be a tough game. We can't underestimate Brentford. You know, you, you mentioned how excellent they've been this season. They seem to have taken up another level from last season when I think they were very impressive, of course. You know, we went there at this, the first game of the season and we got, you know, humiliated. Um, mm. So it was, um, it, it's going to be, a tough game to win. We can't underestimate it, but like you say, I feel like we need to get that in as well. We bounce back from Everton. We bounce back very well from the, the loss at Old Trafford. So I'm expecting more of the same. Hopefully this is something that can really kick on a winning run, kick on a winning run that carries on with a win against Manchester City on Wednesday, which, you know, as we keep mentioning, is going to be a almighty tie. And, and probably in, in terms of league games will be one of the biggest of Arsenal's over the last decade. And, you know, it's it's going to be um, one for the history books. So hopefully we can kickstart it with a win against Brentford tomorrow, which, um, you know, I'm sure we'll be giving our predictions later, but I do think that we will win. And I think we really need to show that aggression and, and really have turned the disappointment into aggression and really take it to Brentford at the Emirates tomorrow. No, no, 100%. Um, as you said, I think great opportunity to bounce back, great opportunity to for the boys to uh, give a good reaction after that mm. disappointing result against Everton. But when I look at this game, Alfie, um, I think it could potentially be decided by the strikers. Obviously, Brentford have got a great striker in Ivan Tony. I think he's proved it not only last season, but this season, what a great striker he is. But we've got Eddie Nketiah, who I think has been sensational, um, replacing Gabriel Jesus in the Arsenal um, lineup since his injury. So, would you go along the same lines that um, this game potentially will be decided by uh, both teams um, attacking strikers? Yeah, potentially. You know, you say how good Ivan Tony's been this season. He's, you know, been excellent and really unlucky not to to play for England of course there's a lot of controversy around that I'm sure that it'll be decided but um you know he, he's a great player one that as well he's, he's got that bit about him of course there was a nice kick about with the boys which I'm sure that even though we are a long time since I mean that was obviously the first game of last season it we've gone a long way but I'm sure Mikel Arteta will still use so? it I so. yeah I mean I mean with the get the, the game when we went um, in the away game, I'm pretty sure yeah, Gabriel yeah. tweeted it. Of course, Lacazette yeah. tweeted it after the home win last season. Gabriel tweeted it after the away win. You know, I've got a feeling <laughs> we'll just carry it on. Um, and all from Ivan Tony. So imagine, mm. you know, he put it on the whiteboard last time, didn't he? And you can imagine mm. it again. Um, we'll see. But yeah, uh, he's a very one of those players that's got a bit about him. It's sort of almost like Neil Mor Morphe, but I don't really hate Ivan Tony. Um, you know, mm. a great player, like you say. And I think that. Um, he'll be key in in Brentford because it's not just the goals that that he, yeah. he scores that, that he adds to Brentford. He has he's got great play. He's great on the ball, and I think you know the best comparison is a lot of people compare him to Harry Kane, True. and I, I like that comparison. I think he's got um, mm. um, a lot of bang on the ball as well, and he'll be key to what Brentford do at the Emirates if they are to get a result, which hopefully they won't. Yeah, no, I can I can foresee it now. Now that you've mentioned it, um, <laughs> five o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. Um, what play? What player do you reckon would go on Twitter and put the tweet out? 
nice kick about with the boys if you have to choose. Obviously, Gabriel's done it, Lacazette has done it. it has to be someone different, no? It's got to, yeah. I think if someone was to do it, it would be someone different. I think that the, the most likely culprit is Gabriel. If he does it twice in a row, <laughs> I'd be very, you know, he's the one that's always on social media and he, he loves to give it back. Um, yeah. I love about him. But I can't, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't think of anyone else. Do it. I think, you know, Granite Xhaka isn't really like that on social media. Yeah. Perhaps we're going for a double. Maybe Aaron Ramsdale, he's probably got it in him. I think, yeah, yeah potentially. Potentially, but I think, yeah, I'd have to agree. I think Gabriel will do it again. Yeah. If I'm honest. <laughs> I think I, because when I look at that Arsenal team on social media, especially Twitter, mm. they seem quite reserved. I think Gabriel is the one. I think after the Man United game, he uploaded the tweet, he said, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and do you know what I love? The thing I love about them on social media is it's almost t- teaching me a bit of Portuguese. I know it mal crack. No idea what it means, but they're coming it on every single it's post. True. So it's true. If someone knows what it means, let me know. I hope it's um, it's PG for the stream. But yeah, I, I love it. They're coming on everything. So um, I'm getting a language lesson as well from from social media. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, I I just make it easier for myself. I just click on C translation. Yeah. <laughs> just click on C <laughs> translation. But now it's interesting to see what will happen tomorrow and if Arsenal. Um, do win and let's see if there's any tweets flying about but let's let's look at the team for tomorrow's game um at the emirates alfie and we've gone unchanged again i know it might seem a bit boring uh to the viewers but mm. there's there's been a lot of talk um after the everton defeat um a lot of arsenal fans have been on social media saying this might be a perfect opportunity to use the likes of uh leandro trossard uh takira tomiyasu um, but myself and you have decided that no, we go unchanged because bad games can happen. I think mm. bad days can happen, bad days at the office can happen. But I think gearing up to that Manchester City game on Wednesday, I think we need a solid enough first 11 that have done well for us throughout the season. And it's this first 11, and they need momentum. So obviously, you've gone with the same back line, same midfield, same attack. Did you have any changes that you were thinking about making, or did you think? No, this is the first eleven that needs to start. Yeah, I, I didn't have any thoughts about changing anything um, personally. I think you know, like you say, there was arguments for Tommy Asu to come in for White, who perhaps has struggled over the last two games. But we must reiterate, mm. it has been the last two games, and you know, he was coming up against Rashford, who's been in red hot form, and then um, you know, I think we can allow him a bad day at the office. He's been that good. He's not called Mister Consistent for for no reason. And Rashford um, usually has usually has good games against Ben White as well. I think yeah, he, he did struggle, but you know it's um, but but like I say, I don't think there's any reason to drop him. Like you say, it's it's the best opportunity for him to bounce back as it is for the rest of the team against Brentford mm. and really take that into Man City because we will need him um, against Man City. We like to say we need the best eleven available, mm. and I think if you judge it by the rest of the season, we're in the position we are because of the first eleven that we started for the majority of the season. So I think that um, there is arguments. For, for us to, to change, but you know, I, I can't see us doing it. And I think that the, the two that have been argued, of course, you know, like you said, was White and Martinelli, Trossard and Tommy Asu potentially coming in. But I think that we've got to keep it there. We need the strong 11 for, um, for Manchester City. Um, but it, it'd be a real good opportunity. I think that, you know, if we are in a position where we can make a few changes, I think we will, because we will want to, to rest a few as well. Um, let's hope that we've got, you know, a free goal lead. Um, very, you know, I'm, I'm talking very, um, optimistically of course hmm. you know i don't want to to disrespect brentford and say we're going to go in there and we're going to be free and up and we can just make loads of changes but in an ideal world we can be in that position where we can rest players ahead of wednesday's game um but i think going into it we really need to have the strong strongest 11 out and and you know let them bounce back from the loss at goodson park yeah no i agree i think for me it was difficult i think i was looking at gabriel martinelli um he struggled, I think, in the past few um, mm. games. And obviously, it could be an opportunity potentially for Trossard to come in. But I think, like I've just touched on, the bad days can happen, bad games can happen. And we need Martinelli against Manchester City. Mm. So for me, there's no point taking him out of the team against Brentford and chucking him back um, against Manchester City because you won't get that momentum, that consistency mm. that you need, that rhythm. So uh, that that's why we've probably gone unchanged. But I just want to touch on William Saliba and Gabriel because I, I watched an interview a few days ago. Uh, Rio Ferdinand spoke very highly of William Saliba. He said mm. William Saliba has been Arsenal's best centre back this season. He spoke about his height. He's six foot three. 
But uh, there's been a lot of... Uh, it seems that Gabriel has gone under the radar for me. Mm. He's, he's been quite underrated, if that makes sense. Because yeah. he's made mistakes this season. But I think William Saliba has also made mistakes this season. Maybe Gabriel's mistakes have led to goals. But I think William Saliba's mistakes have also led to goals. Obviously, mm. he gave away that penalty against West Ham. He has made mistakes. But for me, I think Gabriel has been phenomenal this season. I think that the, the great thing about them is they complement each other so well. I think mm. that you mentioned, of course, they make a mistake. The, the, the good thing is these are, they're either there to cover each other or you know, the, they're there to pick each other up and, and tell each other to keep going. And I think the good thing with Gabriel is, you know, the game against Fulham comes to mind, of course, he makes a mistake, but he rectifies it with the goal, the winning goal as well, which is, um, you know, it's something that I, I do love about Gabriel. And I think you, you mentioned underrated. I think he has, you know, gone under the radar. I think personally, if, if we were to pick, and I hate picking because I, I don't want yeah. to feel like I'm picking a favourite. I mean, they're both excellent centre-backs. They've both been phenomenal this season. Mm -hmm. You know, since the World Cup, you'd, you'd say that Gabriel has been in better form, but I'm not saying that Saliba's been poor. They've both been excellent. I think we've just got to sit back and realise how lucky we are to have both of them playing at the same time with years ahead of them. And yeah, they just complement each other so well. Got a great chemistry now. They've, they've really built that up and we've got a brick wall um, in there now, haven't we? And I think that mm -hmm. it, it's great to see. And, and yeah, yeah. Um, Keep him underrated. I, I don't mind him being underrated. I think that, you know, Arsenal, we don't, we don't need other fans to appreciate how good they are. We, we need to appreciate how good they are. And I think Arsenal fans now that, um, you know, there was a lot that had turned on him. Mm. And perhaps there was a, a, a time when, you know, he did let his emotions con take control of him and, and he made silly judgments. But I feel like he controls it a lot better now. And he, he's, he's a much more well-rounded defender and um yeah they've both been excellent so i'm not going to say it's anyone's better than than each other because they're both excellent and they've both been in great form and they're both undroppable at the moment yeah no i agree i think what what he's, he's improved so much um mm. in terms of now when i watch him play he seems more composed more mm. calculated but he's improved with his ball playing out of the back. Yeah. I think that's improved so much. Um, at times, I think going back to last season, it was rash. Um, he didn't know when to make that pass. But I think this season, he's come on leaps and bounds. And now he looks like a Mikel Arteta player playing mm. out from the back. So it's a testament to how much he's improved. But yeah, it, I think we, when we go back to defensive partnerships, we've had great partnerships over the years go back to Saul Campbell and Colo Torre um go back to uh, Tony Adams and Bold um Koshoni and Mertesacker yeah. I think in recent seasons I think they were a great uh partnership and I think Gabriel and William Saliba as you've touched on I think they complement each other so mm. well so yeah we don't we don't mind um having them both we don't need to choose who's better <laughs> between between um both of them but I just want to touch on Thomas Party because Obviously, last weekend, he got substituted against Everton. Obviously, that could have been an effect from that rib injury he suffered against Manchester City. But Jorginho came on. He got uh, got a lot of criticism. I think at times it was a bit harsh, to be honest, on mm. social media. Um, a lot of Arsenal fans on his back saying he was awful. Why have we bought Jorginho? But I think during that game, at that stage, I understood what Mikel Arteta wanted. He wanted a bit more control in the game. But Thomas Party again, it shows his um, importance to this Arsenal team because every time we've dropped points this season, he's either not started, he's either been substituted, and we've either dropped points or we've lost the games. So it shows, doesn't it, how important Thomas Party is to this Arsenal team? Yeah, I think it shows how much a fully fit Thomas Party is important to this team as well. Yeah. I think that um, <laughs> he looked a little bit off his game at Everton. You know, he, he didn't look himself, but I think you've got to say that is that injury that he picked up against Manchester City. I think that is probably the main reason as well that he was substituted. It looked pre-planned to be on the hour mark as well. You know, yeah. I think that it was something that they'd said before and they thought, you know, we'll, we'll bring Jorginho on. And that's the reason that we signed Jorginho, whether, you know, fans like it or not. He's there to to fill in for party when we need him because, you know, that was probably the, the biggest spot in the, the team that needed filling because... You know, if we're, we're a party in injury away from 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 collapsing, I think that, you, like you say, when he's injured, we don't look the same team. Of course, you look at, at Old Trafford; we went there without party, and Lukonga really couldn't fill in. 
and you know, whereas I, I'm not saying Jorginho is that level, of course he isn't. Um, I think that you know, Party is arguably the best in the league in that position, but you know, he's a lot better than than Laconga in that in that respect in that in that position. He's got a lot more experience, and you know, I, I think it was a, a really shrewd bit of business. I think that he had a lot of unwarranted criticism after Goodison Park. I think people just wanted to look for someone to to blame for the loss and. Jorginho coming from Chelsea. I mean, I've seen a lot of people saying it's hard to get past. You know, he did play for Chelsea. He, he, he said things that I remember when... Um, I, I even remember he scored against us. It was in Mikel Arteta's first home game. I was there. We lost 2-1 to Chelsea. He should have been sent off as well. And I'll stand by that. No matter now, he's a, an Arsenal he missed, player. He should he, have been sent off. Has he missed a penalty against Arsenal as well? Um, Leno saved it. Leno saved it. Yeah, that was yeah, um, yeah that was in COVID. But before yeah. that, it's Mikata's first game should have been sent off and scored the winner. So I disliked him from then. So it's hard to for a player that you don't like that signs mm. and you've got to really get behind them. But you know, he's an Arsenal player now. I'm an Arsenal fan. I'll always support the players. And um, yeah, I think that we've really got to get behind him. I don't think that he deserved a lot of the criticism he got. Um, mm. I think the whole team as a whole was was pretty poor as well other than you know maybe Gabriel Saliba um so you know I think it's one that um it you like to say it really showed how much we need a fully fit Thomas party but hopefully now we've got Jorginho we don't need to risk him when he's got you know perhaps a slight injury yeah no I agree before we wrap up and get um your predictions and my predictions uh for this game I just want to touch on Bakaya Saka because um I found it interesting mm -hmm. last weekend as you've touched on there were quite a number of bad performances but a lot of Arsenal fans and opposing fans, obviously you've got the Man United, the Tottenham fans, Chelsea fans, they want Bukayo Saka's back, um, stating mm. how awful he was. But when I watched that performance, I thought he was very good, to be fair. He made four key passes and five successful dribbles in that game. And if people are saying that's an awful performance, mm. Bukayo Saka is at a stage where the bar is so high now, isn't it? Yeah, I, 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 you know, he wasn't at his best, of course, but he wasn't awful. I think yeah. the thing is with Everton, they they targeted Saka, they doubled up on him. You know, as we saw again against um, against Newcastle in the two games where he's really been stifled, but he still had chances. He had one cleared off the line. You know, like you say, um, he, he had a couple of moments where we saw Bakayo Saka, but you know, Dwight McNeil was basically playing as 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 a as a left back, wasn't he? And you know, Michaelenko. Um, you know, he dealt well with him, to be fair to him. But, like, you know, it, it helped that they were doubling up on him and really frustrated him. So, I just hope that we've got a solution to it. You know, we didn't see as much of Ben White overlapping against Everton as, as he perhaps has done over the last few few weeks. Um, so, you know, it's um, a strange one. But, like I say, it's, they'll, they'll love anything to get on his back. They'll, they'll see a sofa score rating or the fact he didn't score or get an assist. They won't watch the game and they'll say, oh yeah, Bakayo Saka, he's, he's rubbish. They'll get a picture of someone um, or, you know, and, it, and it's like, they'll use it to mock him and, you know, it's just it's just football fans on Twitter. It's just a little bit of banter, I guess, isn't it? But it's just, you know, it, it just shows it, it's it's easy enough to get on the back when they're not playing well. Um, but, you know, when he's been playing excellently in the games before, you know, the games against Manchester United at, at away to Tottenham, um, you don't hear a peep off them, do you? So um, it just shows a waiting for him to to perhaps have a, a poor performance to get on his back. And I think that's a sign of a player that, you know, has really made it. Once you've got people who are really preying on a bad performance, you know, that's got to be a sign that you're a, you're a great player. 100%. No, no, I agree. I agree with that. Um, predictions, Alfie, I know you're confident for this one. Yeah. What, are you, what are you thinking? I'm not confident. I haven't thought through my prediction, so this is going to have to be off the spot. Um, I'm going to say 3-0. I said 3-0 earlier in the stream. Um, I'm going to go 3-0. And goal scorer-wise, we'll go Nketiah. We'll go Bakayo Saka, as soon as I've been going on about him. And, I, you know, I like getting one of those different goal scorers. And I'm going to predict Ben White to get his first Arsenal goal. You said that quite a lot on stream. I've said that a few times. <laughs> it's going to come in once. It's got to come in once. I've said it that many times. Yeah. No, to be fair, hopefully it does come in. I'm going to go 2-0 to the mm. Arsenal. I'm going to go with Bukayo Saka to grab a goal. I'm going to gra go with Martin Odegaard. Mm. Martin Odegaard to grab a goal. So, yeah, fingers crossed. 2-0 to the Arsenal. Um, we can increase that gap before Manchester City play against Aston Villa ahead of a massive, massive mm. clash on Wednesday night uh, at the Emirates. But, yeah, 
But first thing is we get the three points against Brentford. I think that's the most important thing. But mm. let's see what happens tomorrow, Alfie. But yeah, thank you for jumping on as always, my friend. No pleasure. Thank you for having me on and thank you everyone for, for listening in. Yeah, folks, let us know in the comments. Do you agree with myself and Alfie? Do you think Arsenal will defeat Brentford tomorrow at the Emirates? Who do you think will score? Um, yeah, and let us know the importance of Summer's party to this Arsenal team. Um, we'll be we'll be interested to know um, your comments and thoughts in terms of that. But yeah, thank you for liking, thank you for commenting, and make sure to keep following us down the Arsenal way. Going on, going on, I just